There's so much that fill our days this time of year with the holiday season. Our thoughts can sometimes wander on all the things we have to get done. But today I'm going to share just a slow day of homemaking as a mama of three littles, a little bit of homeschooling, some baking, cooking, and just life in our little cozy home. It's cookie basket making time. So my butterscotch cookies, I frosted the night before and so they are ready to go. And then I put some of my chewy ginger molasses cookies on cookie sheet to thaw so I can bake those. Trim in some rosemary to make another batch of my rosemary shortbread and getting that whipped up and just going to enjoy the morning of time in the kitchen and preparing baskets for neighbors and friends. Oh, I also needed to put my sourdough starter back in my jar that I had cleaned out because I had it resting for a while in the fridge and refeed it. So getting that back to life. So I'm not always super crafty, but I wanted to do a little shape lesson. We've been learning some different shapes and what better way than doing Christmas trees with little things you have around the house, paper, buttons, ribbon, to make all different sorts of simple shapes that my toddlers, preschool age girls can understand and have fun with to remember this fun craft. Who doesn't love a good um, puppy chow or muddy buddies, whatever you want to call it. So my four-year-old is helping me mix that up, melting the chocolate and the peanut butter on the stove so that we can add that all together. By the way, my baby is on the floor kicking next to me, so you are hearing a thump. Just got to tell you that. It was fun to see this clip where all three of us girls were in a line, one stirring in the sink, the other watching, and myself just making the puppy chow. And then all four of us because Elias needed a little attention too. So getting the puppy chow mixed up, adding that powdered sugar, and I added some Christmas M&Ms for some festivity. Time to package it up so separating it out into just snack baggies and then i also did that with my candied almonds to put into the plates and containers so now i'm going to make some seven layer bars i like adding these in as well to my cookie plates or baskets they're so simple i don't put the nuts in there because i know some people have nut allergies but it's just graham crackers melted butter and then you can sprinkle different chocolate chips that you have i use semi-sweet and butterscotch i've had it with white chocolate i've had peanut butter that's really good if you're not allergic to peanuts and then you put sweetened condensed milk over top of that some coconut flakes and boy is that such a simple easy treat and you can cut bars any size so that's a nice thing about bars and they're quick Taking another break from the kitchen to read some books to my girls. So this tin I found at a thrift store for a dollar. I love using tins just because they're so cute and classic. I didn't use tins for everything. I did use some plates and bags. So just what you have on hand, make do with it. Just adding all my cookies in and my goodies and just hoping to bless our neighbors. I love this time of year for gift giving. And honestly, I think any time of year. I believe that's probably one of my um, 
talents or ways to show love is gift giving. So just adding everything in. And then I have these little sayings that someone had given me, multiples of them. And so I'm adding those in there about a little prayer and just topping it off with a lid. All right, since I was in the kitchen, it's time to get prepping on supper. I am making Swedish meatballs. This is something I've never made before, and so I found a pretty good recipe, and I used pork, the last of our ground pork from our organic um, pig that we had bought a, I'd say six months ago, and just adding a bunch of seasonings, like it called egg. I didn't have breadcrumbs, so I used oats. I've done that a few times and then making up the meatballs so that they're prepped and ready for supper time because usually that 4 35 o'clock hour is tricky to get all the prep work done so i do it during nap seven layer bars were done my shortbread cookies were done and so time to get everything cooling so that I can get out with the kids to deliver later on in the day that's a little saying don't we read it to you yeah Lord bless those we love this Christmas day be they near or far away. Bless those good friends who mean so much and those with whom we're out of touch. We bring them all to you in prayer and ask you keep them in your care. Yeah, hold one and not so we packed up our stroller and we headed to some neighbors and it was so fun to see some of the reactions to visit with some of them and have the girls just talk and um, just be present in giving. After some outdoor time, delivering the cookies, time to continue supper prep. So I'm working through all my garden potatoes. I love having the produce to be able to go through. It just takes extra time to clean them. And so we're gonna have mashed potatoes with these Swedish meatballs. So you have to continually rotate the meatballs so that they brown evenly, I believe, on all sides. So it was it's kind of a laborious meal because you're standing over the stove for that. And then I just boiled my um, diced potatoes with skins on, by the way. Added garlic, salt, and it really came together with some milk, sour cream, and butter, of course, and the potatoes too. And then I'm taking the meatballs off the pan so that I can make a bit of a roux with some einkorn flour I put in there. Then I added some milk and heavy cream and beef broth or water. So it's just kind of what I had on hand. And I just poured it in until it looked like a good consistency to me. And then after that had thickened and I let it simmer on the stove for a little bit with continual stirring so it doesn't scorch. Then you add the meatballs back in to soak up all that yummy goodness. I realized I didn't really show a finished product, but they were delicious. Everyone liked them and served them with a side of pickled beets, I think is what I had, and squash, because we're still working through the fall squash too. Now time for my nightly kitchen cleaning. Today was a little more intensive day of cleaning. I wipe everything down really well, the stove, the microwave, um, cleaning the sink, cleaning the floor, adding fresh towels. I remove the rug this time too because I forget about it sometimes that it gets pretty grimy and underneath it gets pretty gross too. So I thought this would be a good night to take care of a little more intensive cleaning. And isn't it funny just how we can repeat our cleaning tasks over and over and it just has to be done again. But to me, there's always something so satisfying about a clean kitchen and having that done nightly so that I can come out the next day and feel good about a good workspace to do 
a lot of our life that we have there. I'm always doing a little spot cleaning under kids' chairs as well. And then I like to use Barkeeper's Friend in the sink for getting it clean. And then I'll, you'll see later too, I use it in the stove to get some of that clean. It's one of my go-to cleaners for chemical based cleaners i usually use vinegar water and lemon essential oils for every other thing but this is definitely something that i think you need a good heavy duty cleaner for well the cleaning of the kitchen is the way i end my night in this video so i hope you enjoyed just this day of homemaking for the holidays Thank you.